Hello! So, I want to talk to you today about a game I played recently. So I decided I'm going to start doing like reviews of any good games I play. And the first one I want to mention is one that I bought 11 years ago. And I played it when, it, when I first got it, and that was kind of it. Honestly, I can never beat the, uh, the real final boss of this game, so... I kind of just put it aside, but I replayed it uh, over this weekend, and honestly, I really enjoyed it. It's such a good game. So, I'm talking about Sonic and the Black Knight. <laughs> yeah, that, that weird the weird storybook game. Uh, for, uh, it kind of goes with Sonic and the Secret Rings, which I haven't played yet. It's on the list. Sonic and the Black Knight is one of the strange titles. But anyway, yeah, so I, <laughs> I actually still have the receipt in here. I bought this game on the 2nd of January 2012 yeah for the, the very low price of 13 pounds additionally the same day I bought Sonic Colors on the DS for 15 pounds and Mario Party on the DS for 25 pounds that was back when Game Station was still a thing over here you know you British people you remember Game Station they got bought out by Game and then Game got bought out by whoever well, Sports Direct so yeah, that's uh, that's that's crazy. Yeah, so I, I got that from Game Station. They used to have one in the town center where I used to live back then. So yeah, about this game. Okay, so I'm just gonna. I've got the instruction booklet. Remember when games used to come with instruction booklets? <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some information from the booklet about this game. Yeah, but, I mean, this is so good. Like they don't do the same anymore. They give you a booklet. It tells you the basis of the story, the characters, everything, how to play it. Like, why don't they do this anymore? What's going on? I made the story. <clears throat> One day, while Sonic is waiting for a potentially stressful encounter with Amy, he is abruptly summoned into the book of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table by a frantic sorceress named Merlina. The young sorceress is being hunted down by King Arthur himself and begs Sonic to help her save the fabled kingdom. Our blue hero immediately finds himself in the middle of the action when he is greeted by a not-so-noble-looking king. The once beloved ruler is now bewitched by the power of the mighty Excalibur Scabbard, and as the Black Knight, he is spreading terror throughout Camelot. To defeat the evil king, Sonic will partner up with Calibur, a sacred sword with a proud manner. Sonic must learn to properly handle the blade as an honorable knight and prove he is worthy of challenging the great king. Meeting familiar faces along the way, Sonic must defeat the evil Arthur and ultimately find a way to restore Camelot. Well, ain't that something? So yeah, it's the story of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, except King Arthur's bad. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a Merlina here, and Sonic has a sword as well, and then Sonic fights the Knights of the Round Table, and then fights King Arthur like twice. Yeah, it's quite good. Going down the characters, obviously, I'm assuming. We all know who Sonic the Hedgehog is by now, but I'm gonna read it anyway. The world's fastest hedgehog who is never far from chaos has an exciting new mystery to unravel. In this tale, he will start out as an apprentice and work his way up to earn the honorable title of a knight. Guided by his sacred sword Calibur, he will be a knight unlike any King Arthur has seen before. Worry not, good people of Camelot, the amazing duo shall bring peace to the kingdom and be craved as one of the greatest knights of all time, the Knight of the Wind. A good thing to do, honestly. Uh, additionally, there's the character Merlina, uh, the royal sorceress of Camelot. Merlina is the granddaughter of the legendary Merlin. When King Arthur turned to evil, Merlina used her magic to summon Sonic to help her save the kingdom. So this is, uh, yeah, this is the granddaughter of Merlin from the King Arthur story that everyone knows. And then there's King Arthur, the legendary king is best remembered as a loyal monarch who wielded Excalibur. However, now he rides a black steed and leads knights from the underworld, spreading terror throughout the kingdom. The black knight's grip on his tyranny over Camelot has never been challenged until now. Man, why don't they make booklets like this anymore? Alright, so let's begin with. Um, I don't know if they only released it on the Wii, but I played it on the Wii, which means Wii Remote and Nunchuck. And that can only mean one thing, motion controls. So, you know, you use the stick to move, and the A button to jump or whatever, and then swing your sword, you swing the Wii Remote. Uh, this has made my arms ex have excruciating pain, so I've done a lot of this going on, and it's kind of incoherent, and it's just... hurts my wrist after a while. 
after two days of playing it for a lot of time. So anyway, the game starts with this really slick opening cutscene. Like it, it looks really good for the fact that this game is 11 years old. It's on the Wii. It, it's on the Wii, and it looks this good. But yeah, so it starts with a really nice cutscene of Marina summoning Sonic in, and Sonic has the fight with the Black Knight, and you know it's quite easy. It's kind of the tutorial on on, on, on this whole thing. Um. So yeah, Sonic go, he goes around like about seven different areas in to begin with of like of, of the of this kind of land you got like the castle Camelot you got like Avalon as well Misty Lake has a really nice theme as well so you know you go all these different areas you run through and you, you slash your enemies with the sword and get to the goal sometimes you have to talk to the townspeople give them your rings you know because you know Robin Hooding it and sometimes you have to like just defeat loads of enemies to save the peoples. So you have a challenge. The, the, the different levels kind of give you different challenges to go for here. And then uh, you've got the th the Knights of the Round Table. You've got uh, Sir Lancelot, who's kind of played by Shadow in this one. Uh, honestly, like I beat this fight in ten seconds, and I've been kidding. I just I just whacked the remote like crazy, and I just ended up winning. Uh, then you've got uh, Sir Gawain, played by Knuckles the Echidna, who was uh, a little harder, but still pretty easy. And uh, then uh, Sir Percival, played by Blaze the Cat. Uh, they, they, I, don't, I don't know why they didn't like think about this, because like, they refer to it as she, but she's a sir, so how does that work? Uh, like, couldn't they have used Silver the Hedgehog? That's all I'm saying. Couldn't they have used Silver the Hedgehog? But hey, anyway. And then you got the uh, you got some of the other characters pop up, like Tails. He's the blacksmith in this, and honestly, the blacksmith remix of Believe in Myself from Sonic Adventure is really nice. Uh, some of the other character themes appear: Unknown from Me for Knuckles, Throw It All Away for Shadow, Doesn't Matter for Sonic. So it's quite nice to have these themes coming back. Uh, from from the adventure days, because they, they were pretty good. So then after fighting these knights, and you know, eventually you you, you find your way to it. Uh, you find you meet the lady of the lake, who's uh, Amy in this one. And uh, eventually you kind of figure out what it is. Oh, I I need to defeat the knights. Done that. Okay, now go fight King Arthur and Avalon. You fight King Arthur. It's really cool tune for fight knight plays. Uh, I took about 20 minutes to beat this thing, but my winning uh, attempt lasted about 30 seconds. <laughs> I know, right? I, don't, I don't get it. Uh, so that ended, and then once you defeat uh, King Arthur, it just the game really abruptly goes into the credits. Yeah. But don't put the game down yet, because... And uh, I'm going to have to warn you on the spoilers here, because there's a major plot point here that I'd be giving away. So if you haven't played the game and you don't want to hear spoilers, maybe skip this part, okay? And, uh, yeah. Uh, so, you, you go back into the game after you've done the credits and Night of the Wind has played you out. And uh, then you continue with the story and King Arthur just vanishes, his dead body just vanishes. And Sonic brings the ex scabbard of Excalibur to Merlina, who then reveals herself as the twist villain, which is quite interesting. So she then decides that she's going to start trying to make this uh, this kingdom of theirs eternal uh, using the scabbard. Uh, and um, I think the reasoning is that she never really processed the loss of her grandfather Merlin at this point. And she kind of just wants everything to just live forever, so that nothing dies. Which, you know, kind of makes sense. Um, so Sonic has a team with the Knights of the Round Table, and th at this point you get to play as Shadow, Knuckles, and Blaze. Uh, and you have to go, like, try and create a barrier around the main castle with, uh, with, with the Sacred Swords. Uh, and then eventually Sonic runs back and tries to stop Merlina, and then gets beat down pretty bad. But then, the Knights of the Round Table use their sacred swords to uh, create the Excalibur that Sonic ends up using. He gets this really cool gold armor and everything, and sword. And he does his final battle against the Dark Queen, who's kind of got this massive, like, 
King Arthur on steroids kind of thing going on here, like really big dark magic version. Big gonna be. And it's not too hard of a boss fight, and you know, it's 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 challenging in terms of the game, like how hard the game's been already, like but it's not necessarily the hardest thing in the world. Uh, you, you beat you beat the boss. Uh, you, you reason with Marina and tell her that it's, uh, that it's like, you know, after that at some point you're just gonna make the of life. That's the story here. And then you get the true end credits. You get live life playing, which is a really nice piece. And then you go back into the game again, and there is an abundance of extra side levels and challenges. Some of them are okay. Some of them are just like get reach the goal. That's fine. Some of them is is like chain enemy kills, which isn't always too difficult. Some of them are chain rings, which is quite difficult sometimes. You have to get like a hundred rings in before like the chain breaks. Uh, some of them are a little more specific, like uh, passing through certain gates uh, within a lot of time. Some of them are taking no damage. Some of them you only get to use your sword a certain amount of swings to, uh, to try and beat the level. And then there's Lancelot Returns. I haven't beaten Lancelot Returns yet. Uh, it's, it's honestly, like, I'm pretty sure it's, it's been considered one of the hardest bosses in just the Sonic franchise in general. And in fact, this is just kind of a bonus fight against Shadow, who's kind of using all sorts of new tricks on you. He's using Chaos Spears, using like Force Fields and whatever. Very difficult. Yeah, very, very difficult. I had to stop myself because, like, I spent like. 20-30 minutes trying to beat Lancelot Jones and uh, my right arm went numb so I kind of just had to stop on that one. But the, the point is there's a lot of post game to this game so make sure you don't put the game down as soon as you've um, as soon as you've like beaten King Arthur because there's more to it. And then once you've beaten Melina that's great but there is more to do there. So it is worth going back to it you know getting all that done. I might try and complete all the side missions see what happens. But, uh, Overall, it's it's a very enjoyable game. It's very uh, it's very unique because like it's it's different having Sonic, you know, with the sword just slashing for everybody. Uh, it's its style is very unique as well. A lot of its cutscenes are kind of just like still images and it, it, with kind of like a story but kind of aesthetic to it, which actually makes it hold up better than if it was like the cutscenes in other games like. Uh, Sonic 06, or the adventure ones don't. The adventure one does not hold up well at all. Even the graphics of like, yeah, Sonic 06, and even Unleashed at times doesn't look that great. Like, but doing it this way with the story aesthetic, it, it looks quite nice just at any time. The same way that Paper Mario never really looks, uh, never really looks dated because you know the the kind of paper aesthetic is uh, that doesn't change much over time, so it's um, so it holds up really well. And then the few cutscenes that they did do for this game that were proper cutscenes, like they HD'd all of them. Like the, like most Sonic games have like a really HD opening cutscene and a really HD cutscene before the final boss and then at the end, and that's about it. But um, now this one, like every cutscene is HD, which is pretty nice. Like it's really clean. See, so, yeah, overall, this is this was a really fun experience. Honestly, I would definitely recommend it. Like, cause Sonic games are a bit hit and miss as to how good they are. Um, yeah, if you're a Sonic fan, you know. Especially the uh, 3D ones. No, I, t I, d I just I don't really care for the 2D ones that much, but the 3D ones are a lot more divisive. Like, most people love the 2D games, and that's fine. I just see it as Mario, but harder, so like, why would I play it? But uh, I play the 2D games occasionally. But the 3D games I come for because that Sonic 3D is its own thing. Like, it's not trying to be Mario or anything. Except, like, you know. Sonic Lost World, trying to be Galaxy. Sonic 06 kind of did the princess kidnapping so many times in the same story that Peach would actually be laughing at least at this point. Um, but uh, yeah, when, when Sonic 3 usually does its own thing, and so, that's, so I usually just play those ones. Uh, Black Knight is really interesting actually. It's, it, it, again, it is unique. It's really unique. It's not like any others. It's a rare occasion where Dr. Eggman doesn't seem to feature at all in this game. Uh, at least not that I know of yet, not unless he's like a secret 100% final boss kind of thing, but 
Eggman's just nowhere to be found, which I think is good, because, like, if you shoehorn Eggman in without necessarily needing him, you get Sonic 06 or Sonic Story, like, could have just focused on Mephiles and Nibblus, but we had to bring in, uh, the Eggy. We had to bring in Eggman. But, uh, yeah, this one, he's just not there. They, they focused on their original characters for their main villains. They focused on King Arthur, they focused on Merlina, which, again, really good twist, actually. That was the one thing I remembered from my playthrough in 2012, was that Merlina was the real villain. Like, so it was that good that I remembered it 11 years later. But, uh, yeah, so I think this game is just, like, the storybook games, this one is Secret Rings, I don't think they got the best reception, but I think Black Knight is definitely worth a play. And yeah, the music's really nice as well, like, that's definitely worth it. So yeah, I definitely, I, I don't know, I think... My Black Knight's not perfect, the motion controls are a bit off sometimes and whatever, and you know, it's a bit short, I guess, especially the first story. Um, but yeah, it mostly plays nicely. So I'm, mean, I'm mean, in terms of Sonic games, because like if I try and give this a rating compared to other game series, it's like a whole thing. But in terms of Sonic games, I'd say this is probably a seven out of ten. For me. Uh, but then again, what do I know? My favorite Sonic game is Shadow of the Hedgehog. But uh, yeah, so th this is a really good Sonic game actually. Uh, so I would definitely recommend it if you've got a Wii, if you've got. A, a used game store somewhere nearby. I mean, I bought this for 12 and uh, no, 13 pounds when it first came out, so it should be cheaper now. It should be like eight, seven, maybe five. But you know what? I'm actually gonna look it up on CEX and find, uh, and find out how much it is. So CEX is kind of like a, a used game store in England, uh, where you kind of buy and sell your old games and whatever, DVDs, Blu-ray. So I'm just looking up now how much. Um, Sonic and the Black Knight goes for. Uh, let's see, Sonic and the Black Knight. Sonic and the Black Knight, they sell for six pounds at CEX, and they'll buy it off you for two pounds. <laughs> wow, it's worth a bit more than that in my opinion, but okay, <laughs> two pounds. I get a I get what, like a, 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 a one sixth return on this if I was to give it back. But you know, you can buy it for six pounds, it's really cheap, like there's no reason not to get it. It's not like trying to get Thousand Year Door in the Paper Mario series, which that put me out 120 quid, I'm not even joking. So like, there's no excuse not to get Black Knight, and I would definitely, definitely recommend it. So anyway, that wraps up this review for um, Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, I don't know what it'll be next time. Um, I'm pretty close, actually, to finishing Marvel's Midnight Suns, so I might talk about that. I might do Secret Rings next weekend, or I might just uh, I might just pick a Paper Mario game that I know really well, and oh, I'm Mario and Luigi, just review that. But uh, yeah, so that night it's pretty good. It was actually a lot better than I remembered it being. So you know, definitely give it a try. I mean, that's all for me today. If you've got a game that, um, if you've got like a Mario game or a Sonic game, because those are the ones I mostly play, that you, you think I should review, let me know because I might add it to my list. Or if there's a Sonic game that I haven't played because I'm still getting into it and all, but uh, I, I played at least 60 Mario games, so you know, if you tell me a Mario game to review, I've probably played it unless it's one of the bad ones, like the educational ones or Hotel Mario or something. And as for Sonic, you know, I'm getting through the 3D ones. I've, I've played like I've, most of the 3D ones now to some degree. My copy of Adventure keeps breaking, so... Yeah, so just let me, let me know if there's anything you think I should review at any point. And uh, I'll see you next time for the next game review, okay? So, thanks for watching, and, uh, you know, I'm going to do the whole, uh, you know, like, like, comment, subscribe, all that. You know, do whatever. Uh, see if I can get myself to a thousand view, a thousand subscribers soon, because that'd be pretty cool. I'm like seventy percent there. That's pretty. That's pretty cool, actually. So uh, yeah. So yeah. It's all good. Uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. Uh, play the Black Knight because honestly, like, it, people don't talk about it enough in Sonic. Like, it, it, this needs to be discussed more, especially the soundtrack, because Crush Forty absolutely killer. So you know, amazing. Thanks for watching and goodbye.